Okay, welcome everybody to the not so live live stream of the NSCR and Beheg University of Applied Sciences. Uh, NSCR is the Netherlands Institute for the Study of Crime and Law Enforcement, and uh, we're going to talk about cybercrime and cybersecurity today, but only the human factor because we're specialized in that. So, you know, we're interested in technology, but we're not uh, IT experts ourselves. So, we really try to focus on offenders, on victims, and on the people that actually try to tackle cybercrime. Um, most of you that know us already know that, and you've seen this book that's also on the screen there. Uh, the research agenda, uh, all about the human factor in cybercrime and cybersecurity. We published that a couple of years ago, but for the guys and girls out there that don't know this yet, just download it, it's for free, and it gives you a nice overview of what we do know and what we don't know about the human factor in cybercrime and cybersecurity. Again, it covers victims, offenders, criminal networks, dark web, etc., etc. So uh, I think it's very interesting and relevant. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, uh, get a copy of it. So I'm going to do a small introduction, maybe a minute or two, to talk about what we actually do here at NSCR and at uh, the Hague University of Applied Sciences. And then three of the people that uh, have done some great, interesting new researches will talk about it. Most of the work has not been published yet, except for one. Uh, and we do that because, you know, we want to share some new stuff with you. Uh, and it's not all theoretical. We actually have done some proper empirical uh, research, but we really want to share uh, our latest knowledge with you. So you have to wait for the publications for a number of months or even years, but, you know, you can uh, get the latest right now, right here. Uh, so first of all, we focus on victims and we focus on offenders, which is a bit weird because they're completely different. But as there is so little empirical research on victims and offenders, we decided, you know, we just got to start somewhere. So we decided we're going to do both of these things. So first, I'm going to tell you a bit about what we are actually doing right now when it comes to victimization research. And after this, I'm going to tell you what we're doing right now when it comes to uh, offenders. So victims slash Resilience, which is of course very important. Uh, what we're doing right now, and Susanna will give a, a talk about it uh, right after this, is an experimental survey to actually look at cyber behavior, but not only reported behavior by victims, but also actual behavior. So we're going to do a number of experiments and we're going to see if the two of them match. Uh, of course they don't, but it's very relevant when you actually want to protect victims from of becoming uh, a victim of potential victims. Uh, the second one, which I think is very important because we know that victimization rates are very high when it comes to civilians, it's between 5 and 20 percent, depending on whether or not you only look at hacking or also include online frauds and uh, malware, etc., etc. When it comes to businesses, it's about one in every five businesses has become a victim of a cyber attack every year. So. The crime rates are very high, victimization rates are very high, so that's why we are focusing on resilience, because we know something's going to, going to happen. And we're trying to make sure that we develop ways to, you know, make sure that when something happens, you're still resilient and you're able to function uh, in a normal way. So that's why we're developing an app right now. We have developed a, a, a scanner that companies can actually use to really quickly gain insight into how resilient is how resilient is my organization when it comes to uh, cyber attacks. Uh, so these are all things that we're doing right now, and we're building a number of interventions on top of that to actually make sure that the resilience of these companies is going up. And of course, we're going to measure that. So again, publications will be going to last. It's going to take us a, a number of years before we actually can publish about it. But we're doing the actual field work right now in the Netherlands. Another one, risk communication, uh, is very important because what we noticed over the past couple of years when we tried to talk to owners of SMEs and other potential victims that says, yeah, yeah, cyber is interesting, cybersecurity is very important, of course, but I don't have time, I don't care, I don't think I will be a victim, you know, why, why, why would they want to attack me? Well, we know that one in, one in five organizations already became a victim of a cyber attack. So we know we should find other ways to communicate with these people to make sure that they do understand there's a problem and they actually going to act upon that. And uh, as far as I can tell right now, we don't have the right tools to reach the 99% that thinks, not, that thinks that nothing going to happen to them. So risk communication is a very, very important factor that 
We don't know anything about it when it comes to cyber, and we're really going to uh, try and gain more insight into that over the next couple of years. Uh, last but not least, willingness to report cybercrime, because again, we know victimization is high, but nobody goes to the police. Well, it doesn't have to be a bad thing because the police doesn't have to you know, act upon all crimes. Maybe the bank can help you or an insurance company. But we do want to know why people don't go to the police. You know, Is it because they think the police uh, are not able to you know, take care of them or don't take them seriously? How can we improve that? Because we do want more knowledge about why people do and don't uh, go to the police or other organizations. So we have got a couple of studies looking into that right now. Uh, and we are about to publish about that, by the way. Okay, so that all about victims. We also focus on uh, offenders. Yeah, we hardly get any sleep because, you know, we just try to do uh, a lot of the work because it's needed. Uh, so cyber criminals, most of the work about cyber criminals uh, is, is done here at NSCR. The AIC is focusing more on the, on the victim side of it. And NSCR is focusing more on the cyber crime side of it. Of course, it's all inter intermixed, but uh, what we're doing right now is we have a, a study about the resilience of uh, dark web markets because we know a lot of criminals are out there on these markets. You know, you can argue about whether these criminals there are the most important ones, whether or not the, the, the true big hackers and mobile rights are actually on the forums. But anyway, these forums or crypto markets are very, very important in the cybercrime ecosystem. And we also know that over the past couple of years, law enforcement is trying to take them down, these forums. And we also know that the administrators of these forums, every once in a while, just you know, shut down the forum, take the money and run. So we do know that the resilience of the markets is very important, and we know very little about it. So we actually try to gain more insight into that. So then my own personal research for the next, I don't know, three or four years, is pathways into cybercrime, because I got very interested in how do these criminals actually end up in cybercrime? Uh, you know, I've, I, I've done some stuff when I was younger that, you know, might be in the gray zone. Uh, there was no legislation back then, so I was definitely not a hacker. But why did I end up here as a researcher and I did not end up being a cyber criminal? So we're actually doing some uh, very cool uh, longitudinal studies in which we actually interview a number of offenders and we try to do that uh, over the couple of uh, next couple of years over and over again. So to gain more insight in, how did you end up here? And from this point on, how did you develop your either your criminal career or your normal career? Uh, another one we're doing right now with uh, Oxford University, Cardiff University, and Michigan State University is all about business models of cyber criminals. And for those of you that have read all of my past work on uh, cyber criminal networks, know knows that I don't really believe in strict business models. I really think that most cyber cr criminals act very opportunistic. But again, we're going to look at uh, a number of cases in the UK and in the Netherlands and hopefully uh, the US to see what the business models of these cyber criminals were in order to learn from them. Because if you don't know about the business model, then you, it's really hard to actually stop criminals because you need to hurt them. You need to get them where it hurts. Um, Hack right is, a, is aligned with this because this is an intervention program in the Netherlands and we're actually going to evaluate it and we're going to talk to everybody involved because Hack right is, is for the young cyber criminal offenders. So what they're doing is saying, we're not just going to send cyber criminals to jail, but we're going to try and see if we can, you know, make them, uh, make them make the right steps in their career. So we're going to connect them to an ethical hacker or we're going to make sure that they're going to do an internship during the summer in, at a cybersecurity company. And of course, we're very interested in the effects of this. Does it work or do people just start hacking because they want to get into an internship? You know, what, what are the effects of these, uh, these new methods that they're trying to uh, use to make sure that people stop committing crime? Uh, trust in crypto markets is something that a lot of people are doing right now. Uh, I think it's very important and we're really trying to look at the social side of things. So we're not going to do social network analysis. We're not going to look at who's trading with who. We're going to look at who's talking to who outside of the forum about the forum. So we're going to look behind the forum uh, to look at trust. Uh, last but not least, criminal decision making. Again, it, it's, it's a bit like the business models. You need to know why and how criminals make decisions. Because if you know that, you can act upon it and you can actually make sure that they maybe stop or do something else. 
So this is a broad overview of what we're doing right now. So you can see that we're doing lots of stuff. Today, we're only going to present about three of these topics. Um, the first one is about the needs of victims, because we know a lot about victimization rates. They are high, nobody goes to the police, but we don't really know whether or not lots of these victims feel like they are a victim and whether or not you know, they can sleep at night and how does it affect you know, their their day-to-day -day life. So there are a couple of people in the world doing this. Uh, Cassandra Cross in Australia is doing some really good stuff. And we started doing uh, this kind of research too. And uh, today we're gonna present the results of uh, what we know about Dutch victims. Well, what we did is we interviewed a lot of victims to try to make sure that we gained a very good picture about you know, how they experienced the victimization and everything that happened after that. So did you go to the police? How did they treat you? You know, uh, how do you feel now after a couple of months and stuff like that? And I have to say there are very uh, interesting and relevant results coming from this uh, first explorative study. Second, and I already mentioned it uh, uh, during my introduction talk, um, Suzanne is going to talk about whether or not people actually know what they're doing online. Uh, we're going to ask about, hey, what do you do online, self-report, uh, what do you know about threats, can you recognize a phishing mail, but we're also, uh, do you know anything about computers, etc, etc, but we're also going to look at the real actual behavior, because one of the, the key studies in privacy research is this one, show that people know that they should act, you know, in a secure way, that they, sh that they know privacy is important, but when you look at their real behavior, it's not, so that's a paradox. And we truly believe that cybersecurity has the same issues. And we're really trying to do that now in an experimental way. So Susanna will be uh, telling you more about that in a bit. Uh, and last but not least, sorry for this typical uh, picture of a hacker. Uh, we, we could not find anything else at the moment. Stefan de Weijer is going to tell you something more about the uh, tra trajectories of uh, defacers, so a very specific type of hacker. Uh, but these are, as far as I can tell, really new and cool ways of looking at all of these defacers and hackers. So I'm really excited. Uh, I hope everybody's going to enjoy uh, our uh, Not So Live live stream. And if you have any questions, you can reach us. Uh, you can leave some comments in the, in the YouTube sessions uh, and we're going to try and uh, interact with everybody. Uh, that's it for now. 